Hey, what's up guys? King J coming to you live from hell. In today's video, I want to talk about cartoons. I'm not going to get into specifics of episodes and the depth of these. I just want to talk about the influence that cartoons has had on my life and my ambitions as a human. Uh, growing up, I watched a lot of cartoons. I grew up watching uh, Nick Jr. I remember, I still remember the face, that, that smiley face that would talk. I remember my favorite cartoon uh, back in the day was Little Bear. That, that cartoon was just awesome. And I watched Franklin and I watched Maisie Mouse and I watched Maggie and the Ferocious Beast and I watched Blue's Clues, which wasn't technically a cartoon, but it had cartoon elements. And really, actually, the more the thing about it, Blue's Clues was this cool mix of it was like Steve living in this cartoon world and I always liked that idea of it. And then uh, I had older brothers so and we would share a room so they were always watching things that I probably shouldn't have been watching at the time and playing games that they shouldn't have been playing like Doom. Like a thing that I always reference is that I would watch my uh, Arthur and I would watch Dragon Tales while playing Doom which I just found the irony in that hilarious. And the thing is, is, I remember being in like second grade and I was still watching Dragon Tales and I remember feeling so much shame like I'm, I'm watching a baby show and I'm not a baby anymore. Now that I look at a second grader, they're like seven years old. Like that's what they should be watching. You know, not this Among Us, uh, Elsa Gate type of weird crap on YouTube. But I, I digress. So, and, and that's another thing is that cartoons have evolved in, in so many ways and now there's a bunch of garbage that you could find anywhere on the internet that's produced by anybody. But I feel like so many of the, th the reasons why I'm into certain things is because of the cartoons that I watched. The shows, but mainly the cartoons. So, and, and I feel like as I got older, the cartoons grew with me, you know. So uh, I started with those PBS Kids and, and Disney Channel. I remember watching Recess on one Saturday morning. If anyone remembers that, that was just super cool. But then uh, as I grew older, I got into SpongeBob and then I got into Simpsons and that I went into Family Guy and it just, you know, and then I started watching South Park when I was in middle school. It's like as I got older, I was able to still find cartoons that related to me in whatever phase I was in. And then when I got into high school, I would watch Adventure Time and I'd watch regular show. And Adventure Time really like opened my eyes to a lot of different things. Like that is probably my biggest influence in terms of animation style and 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 theme and tone and the depth that that show had. Uh, and then actually after that show is when I stopped, after I like left high school, I stopped going so deep into cartoons um but the thing is i never gave up that love for cartoons i just stopped watching them regularly um i mean yeah i remember watching all the classic uh uh cartoon network cartoons courage the cowardly dog and uh, even all the way back to Johnny Bravo and Powerpuff Girls and Dexter's Lab and Cow and Chicken and, and all those. And then the Nicktoons. Uh, I watched Rugrats. I loved Rugrats. I watched Rocket Power. I loved those. And those were all the Klasky Chupo, which is so weird how that duo had such a strange art style. But they made some, some of the most impactful cartoons of the 90s. Like, it's super crazy. And then something happened. I would watch Adult Swim at night, my brothers. So that's how I got into anime, and that's how I started watching uh, more adult-themed uh, cartoons. But one day on Adult Swim, they decided to uh, play some cartoon music videos that included Daft Punk, uh, Interstellar 555, uh, and um, Gorillaz. Clint Eastwood in 192000. Well, basically, and I think Tomorrow Comes Today, which is from their debut album, self-titled album. And it's so weird because those albums became very impactful in my life, especially Gorillaz. And when I think about Gorillaz, I would consider them to be like my ultimate inspiration because they are a cartoon band, this mystery thing. Uh, and they have a lot of hip hop influence and rock influence. And, and that's, I mean, I grew up listening to metal and then I went into rap and then I just, 
I, I've listened to so many different genres. I love vaporwave. I love all types of different uh, music, and I love all types of different media. So when I see something like Gorillas that just finds a way to be undefined, is it a rock band? Is it, it? It's just Gorillas. You know, they're just their own thing. And I find that to be so freeing, even though they're confined to the idea of them being a cartoon band. And I remember when they broke up, I thought, I'll never get to see them. And then they made Plastic Beach, and I was able to see them live, and then I was able to see them again in the Humans tour. And the, just the way that that uh, uh, Jamie and Damon from Gorillaz, they just designed that whole idea of what Gorillaz was and the art style and, and all that. And it also felt like it was connected to a lot of the cartoons that I had already watched. Like in one of the, I remember one day I was able to get some CDs from the store and there was a section of Gorillaz in it and I got all of their CDs. So I got like G-Sides and I got Space Monkeys and, and I noticed that on the back of the G-Sides album cover, 2D, the main, the, the singer of the band, was wearing a shirt that had Mojo Jojo on it. And I, it made me think that, whoa, it's like they're in the same world as the other cartoons. And blah, and, and I love that uh, when, when like worlds collide. Oh, I missed a show. One of my favorite shows was Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. When I was in sixth grade, every Friday I had to make sure that I was on in front of that TV. And that was the same thing with Pokemon growing up too. I had to be sitting at like eight. I remember I would like take a bath early right after school so that I could just be in front of the TV uh, perfect, like in that perfect timing to watch Pokemon. But um, what's crazy is now... I think back on on like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends and I find out that the creator of that show did work on Powerpuff Girls and then he worked on Samurai Jack and I see all these connections with the different creators and I see how that's why these worlds can collide and that's why there's there there's like everything's connected in a, such a specific way and it's funny how Gorillas ended up having Ace from Gang Green Gang in Powerpuff Girls become a temporary part of Gorillas just just for fun just because they could and I thought man just that world is just so cool I always wanted to create my own world and actually I think one of the best shows that created a world is The Simpsons Springfield has so many different characters so many pointless characters like Bumblebee Man and Disco Stew and, and just endless endless characters and and Family Guy too Family Guy's got greased up deaf guy and the pirate with uh the amputee pi- pirate and stuff. But I see the way, the, and, and you know, South Park too. They, they're, they, a lot of these, the, the main thing that I like about a lot of these cartoons is they create a world, an immersive world where there's a lot of storytelling and uh, callbacks to specific things and you just feel connected to it. And that's the type of world that I want to create, like an immersive sort of experience. And, uh, and it's funny how I'm basically coming off like this character. That's like my dream to be a character. And that all comes from my love of cartoons. Cartoons basically influenced my entire life, you know, in a really crazy way. And now, like, I don't watch cartoons anymore. Like, I'll have things on in the background or whatever, but I don't really watch any shows. I watch mostly YouTube videos. I don't, I don't go too deep into shit anymore, but... The influence is still there and it will always remain. Then I always wanted to be a cartoonist. That's what sparked that. So I would make these comics. I had a comic called Bob and Bobbo when it was these two little balls with little feet and they came up with all these different characters and all these stories. And then uh, I did some drawing in, in high school and it was one particular teacher who inspired me and he wanted me to do this art competition. So I did this drawing and it basically led to me doing another one about hell and it was the first time that I ever came up with the concept of the king of hell and it just and it was just sparked all right there very naturally like it just came to me I I didn't really think about it I didn't I didn't have the meaning planned out first I found the meaning later and that's the cool part of that so when I got into college 
I majored in art and I knew from the very beginning that I wanted to tell this story. So I spent the entire time telling this story in a very crude, cartoony, it was very childlike drawings. And I, and I liked that. I liked that aesthetic. I wanted, but I needed to refine it. And I was very lucky to get to the point where I was able to find different techniques and skills to make this like a polished thing. And I had a bunch of pieces and I had a great senior show. And I got a lot of feedback from the professors at the end that said, you you did it, you know, you, you got us to see what you were doing as something real and something serious and like it, you made it work. And I had to make a, like a 10 page paper that basically explained my influences. And yeah, there was a lot of influences in uh, like classical art, uh, but it was always a twist of this cartoon, this modern cartoon spin. And the main idea was always this cross between childhood and adult imagery and adult themes. You know, it's and it's something that I think, you know what was a big influence was Happy Tree Friends. I remember watching that and I remember freaking out the first time I saw that. I thought it was crazy. I was like, whoa, the gore in that. And then uh, Mortal Kombat, finding Mortal Kombat and just seeing all the gore in that and just that that world the dark world in but in cartoon form it always just seemed like to me that was perfect that's the type of story that i wanted to tell like a quentin tarantino cartoon type of thing and uh and all that stems from just being raised watching cartoons (laughs) watching tv and there was another thing i was thinking about yesterday i was like why do i have such a weird like vocabulary like there's things that i say and I have no idea where I even got them from because those words were not spoken by in my household and I realized that it probably has to do with a lot of just watching TV in general just watching so much TV that weird specific words dialect from like parts of the country that I've never even heard of or visited that just come into me and I uh and I remember all that and and it's it's just it's really weird but um I'll probably get deeper into this in another time, but I just wanted to to chat about cartoons and basically how that's the inspiration for the reason why I'm doing everything that I'm doing. In terms of music and the way that I approach art and everything I do, it's really weird. It's really crazy. Uh, So I'm wondering, what is your guys' uh, favorite cartoons? What cartoons do you like? What cartoon did did you grow up with? Uh, What are some things you recommend? What are some shows you recommend? I mean, I'm down with checking things out. I like watching clips and... If his show is good enough, I'll watch the whole thing. I'll binge the whole thing. But uh, yeah, let me know. Uh, Thank you for watching. King J out.